Hello, everybody. I have the honor of welcoming you all to CEPR, the Stanford Institute for Economic Policy Research. My name is Cam Moeller. I'm the Vice Provost and Dean of Research here at Stanford, and I'm also the Vice President for Slack, um, as well as a Professor of Physics and Applied Physics here. I'm incredibly glad that you can all join us, whether you're here in the room or watching us online. Thank you for being here for this policy forum on climate change, co-sponsored by the Hamilton Project at the Brookings Institution. Part of my role as Dean of Research is to oversee the independent academic units here at Stanford, and the Stanford Institute for Economic Policy Research is one of the most, if not the most important, of those independent academic units. I'm incredibly proud of the scholarship at CEPR and our other institutes and how it's so connected to the policies that are being debated and implemented today. CEPR scholars are at the forefront of analyzing and understanding the country's most pressing economic issues. And their research is making their way into the hands of those who need it most. Policymakers who can make better decisions when they're armed with facts and sound analysis. Business leaders who can steer their companies in ways that will benefit their firms as well as the wider economy. And fellow academics who can build on the knowledge that's being created and make their own contributions to this important effort. Much of the work at CEPR happens because of the support of many of you who are those, uh, many of those of you who are in this room today or watching us online today. And I'm grateful for your commitment to CEPR and in many cases for your commitment to all of Stanford. Today's event will take us deeply into how economic policy can be used to combat climate change. And it's a great example of CEPR's reach and timeliness. I'm glad we're able to join forces with our friends from the Hamilton Project on this, as they're working to produce economic policy proposals that will benefit more Americans. There are few issues as urgent as climate change. Many people believe it's the existential challenge of our generation, as well as a great opportunity to make money for a lot of companies. Um, just as a personal note, um, I study quantum materials and devices. That's my branch of physics. And for 25 years, I've been hoping that we would uh, achieve a predictive theory of quantum materials that would let us do uh, computationally based searches for the most effective, most transformative energy materials. People ask me sometimes why I left that to become a university administrator. And it's not because I don't love that research. I do, and I still do some of it. It's because I felt that we're running out of time to make significant progress on this problem, and that the time where we can hope for a technological miracle coming from the work of academic physicists is over. It's a time that what we really need is really outstanding policy and business leaders to step in and work on this problem. And Stanford is at the forefront of addressing this problem. Another one of our institutes, the Stanford Woods Institute for the Environment, has researchers creating climate models, assessing vulnerabilities, and studying risks, all with the intent of addressing the challenges ahead as well as the underlying causes of climate change. And with us today is Chris Field, the director of the Woods Institute, who will be participating on one of this afternoon's panels, along with Charlie Kolstadt and Larry Golder, both senior fellows at CEPR who are also affiliated with the Woods Institute. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to them and also to all of the participants from the Hamilton Project as well as our fellow academics and the leaders from both the private and public arenas. And I'm also honored that former Treasury Secretary Robert Rupin is with us today, along with Mary Nichols, the chair of the California Air Resources Board. Secretary Rubin will be introducing Mary Nichols in more detail shortly, and it's my pleasure and honor to tell you a little bit about Secretary Rubin. Of course, we all know he served as Treasury Secretary from 1995 to 1999 in the Clinton administration and also served in 1993 as the first director of the National Economic Council. He began his career in finance at Goldman Sachs in 1966, serving as co-senior partner and co-chairman from 1990 to 1992. From 1999 to 2009, he was a member of the board of directors at Citigroup, and in 2010, he joined Centerview Partners as a senior counselor. He is one of the founders of the Hamilton Project and is also chairman emeritus of the Council on Foreign Relations. And I'll let all of you judge which of those many contributions is the most impactful, but the combination of them all has surely had a great influence on our lives and on our world. 
Secretary Rubin is the author of In an Uncertain World, Tough Choices from Wall Street to Washington, which was a New York Times bestseller. He graduated from Harvard summa cum laude with a bachelor's degree in economics. He received a law degree from Yale and attended the London School of Economics. It's truly an honor to have Secretary Rubin joining us today, and please join me in welcoming Secretary Rubin and all of our participants to Stanford and to CEPR.